Introduction to computational fluid dynamics from scratch. We are going to set up and solve the governing equations and implement them in Python for the two-dimensional incompressible uh, Navier-Stokes equations applied to the famous lid-driven cavity. So here's a quick outline. We'll review the governing equations, discuss pressure and its uh, impact on the equations as well as implementing or developing a finite volume formulation and then implement the results in Python. Uh, this video only covers the governing equations and the other items will be left to uh, subsequent discussions. So beginning with the governing equations, these are developed using the Reynolds Transport Theorem. And the Reynolds Transport Theorem relates a Lagrangian system to an Eulerian control volume. The reason that we do this is that most conservation laws, like mass is conserved, is only true for a Lagrangian system, which we define as a particular marked mass. So mass is conserved in a given mass, but mass isn't conserved in a given volume of space because we can just add more volume into that particular space. So this is illustrated in this figure where we have a Lagrangian system moving through an Eulerian control volume. At any given time, like in this middle picture, we treat the system and the control volume as being uh, collocated, so they occupy the same space. But where the control volume has nominally fixed boundaries, the system is moving through that, and so we need uh, the Reynolds Transport Theorem to connect these two things. And that's illustrated here by the following equation. Uh, on the left, the Lagrangian system equals the right, the Eulerian control volume. And we have db cis dt, where b cis is some extensive property, like total mass or total momentum or total energy, etc. So the rate of change of that mass, that's the, or the rate of change of b in that system, that's the Lagrangian, that's the left-hand side for this Lagrangian system. That is related to the Eulerian control volume by looking at the rate of change at which big B uh, changes inside that fixed control volume plus the rate at which big B exits that control volume. So those are the, those are the two terms. Little beta here is big B per unit mass and so that rho times beta is B per unit volume. So then when we multiply by some dV and integrate over all the volumes we get big B in the control volume, and then D of that dt is the rate of change of B in the fixed control volume. And then rho beta velocity, that's the flux of B, um, and when we dot that with an outward normal vector, we get the rate at which B is exiting the system through any given volume. So here n dot would be a vector pointing out of the control volume at any uh, location. Technically V here is the relative velocity between the system and the control volume, but if the control volume isn't moving then it's the velocity of the system. So let's go ahead and apply that to the mass balance. To do that we need to specify what big B is, beta is just big B per unit mass, and then we apply the conservation law. So for mass that is big B is mass, beta is big B per mass, which is just one. And the Lagrangian conservation law says that mass is conserved or that the rate of change of a given mass is uh, zero. If we substitute those into the Reynolds transport theorem, and then for convenience just flip the order, uh, left side for right side, then we get this was the Lagrangian conservation law equals zero. Uh, big B was just um, uh, mass and then beta is 1, so beta just isn't shown. So the, we get this blue equation. This is the mass conservation equation, also called the continuity equation, written in a, an integral form. So here we have an integral over volume and again an integral over the surface area and this blue equation is our key equation. Mass, momentum, and energy is what we're going to do and this is the mass part. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the momentum. For momentum, we have the same thing. We need to specify B, beta, and the conservation law. So B is momentum, mv. It's a vector. Uh, beta is that per unit mass, which is just the velocity. And the Lagrangian conservation law 
is Newton's second law, which says that the rate of change of momentum of a given mass is the sum of the external forces on that mass. So then we get to say, what are the external forces and how do we represent them with regards to our system? So the external, the forces, we have surface forces, uh, F, and we have body forces, which we'll denote uh, using an external field, G, which is gravitational acceleration. So um, the uh, net force due to gravitational acceleration, that's just gravity times uh, rho dV is a, a differential mass. And so that dm, dm times gravity, that's a differential force. We integrate that over the whole volume to get the total gravitational force. And then for the surface forces, we uh, look at the force at every point on the surface of our uh, system and then multiply that by uh, dA. Technically, F here is a force per unit area times dA gives us the net force. So then if we apply that, we have viscous forces and pressure forces. So this F is going to be a viscous force and a pressure force. And we want the forces that are acting on the surface, so we get minus tau dot n and minus p delta dot n. Here tau is the stress tensor, and p delta is the pressure tensor. Pressure is a scalar, delta is the unit tensor. And we're dotting these with the surface normal so that we get the appropriate uh, components of the stress and the pressure. Here we have a negative sign because the unit normal points out of the surface but we want the forces on the surface so we just take the negative so that we are pointing into our system instead of out of our system so this is how we write the so then we'll substitute these quantities here we'll substitute that in for the force and uh, this is the result of the Lagrangian conservation law. So dB system dt is this quantity. That's going to be the left hand side of our Reynolds transport theorem. So when we apply this to the Reynolds transport theorem we get uh, the following. Again we're swapping the left and right hand sides because that's what's typically done. So this shows us that the rate of change of momentum in our control volume, the rate of yeah, the rate of change of momentum inside of our control volume plus the rates at which momentum enters and leaves the control volume is equal to the sum of the forces acting. So here this VV is a tensor, the quantity VV. We can write that using uh, this so-called outer product V cross V circle cross or we can write VI VJ in index notation. When we actually go to solve the equations, we'll split this into a u-velocity component and a v-velocity component uh, for the x and y components of um, velocity uh, so that we don't necessarily have to worry too much about that. Okay, finally, let's look at the energy equation. Same story, we need to specify basis. That's just going to be the total energy, where we write that as the sum of internal energy here mu, u is internal energy, not velocity, and one half mv dot v is the uh, kinetic energy. And then beta is just e over m, which is little e. And then we need the conservation law, and the conservation law is um, first law of thermodynamics. The rate of change of the energy of a system is equal to the heat flux uh, the rate at which we add heat plus the rate at which we do work plus in this case uh, the rate of uh, conversion from potential energy to internal energy changes in, in potential energy are listed here so here Q is the heat flux factor and as before the force is minus tau dot n minus P delta dot n and so for the heat flux vector we have a negative sign and when we put in these forces we'll get negatives as well. 
Um, when we do the substitution, tau and delta are both symmetric. Tau is a effectively the unit as a unit matrix. It has ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Or it's this is the Kronecko delta. Delta i j is zero unless i equals j, which implies that the and in that case it's one, which implies that the diagonal is one. Um, so when we um, plug these in, we're going to take advantage of the fact that both delta and tau are symmetric so that we can reorder, uh, reorder these dot products as shown. Okay, so we substitute those into the Reynolds transport theorem and then again find, swap the right and left hand sides. And we get the rate of change of total energy in the control volume plus the rate of change of total energy crossing the surface is equal to heat and uh, sorry this is uh, heat transfer and this is viscous heating and this is pressure volume work and this is changes in our uh, potential energy. So those blue equations are the governing equations mass, momentum, and energy. Now these equations represent th there's three equations and our variables are rho and uh, mass rho and energy and velocity but we also have a lot of other symbols appearing we have pressure and we have q and tau and um, all of those need to be specified in terms of our main variables which are rho and uh, velocity and energy so we do that by specifying equations of state and constitutive relations. Um, the ideal gas law is an example of an equation of state here. P is rho RT over M, where M is the mean molecular weight, T is temperature, R is the universal gas constant. The, um, so that relates pressure to density. This introduces, though, a new quantity temperature. And so we have a thermodynamic relation that will relate uh, energy to or temperature to energy velocity and pressure so um, if we have an ideal gas temperature is a function only of internal energy so little e minus one half v dot v and um, so for a given e and v we can invert that thermodynamic relation to get the temperature as needed and then we have finally constitutive relations where we write q the heat flux vector and tau in terms of density, velocity, energy, pressure, uh, temperature is needed. So Q, for example, might be minus K grad T, where K is a uh, thermal conductivity. Uh, stress tensor will be written in terms of viscosity, um, and we'll show that uh, further below when we uh, apply the uh, equations in uh, discrete form for the numerical approach using the finite volume method. So all of these equations, the blue equations for mass, momentum, and energy, those are written in uh, integral form, which is convenient for using a finite volume method. Often you'll see those written in differential form, and you can get the differential form by, uh, if you assume the control volume is fixed in time, then you can move big D dt inside the volume integrals. You can replace integrals over the surface area with volume integrals by applying the Gauss divergence theorem, which is given here. V dot NDA over, integrated over an area is equal to del dot V integrated over a volume. And here V isn't specific to velocity, it can be any vector. So for example, rho V, that quantity is a, is a vector. Rho beta V is a vector, so we can apply it appropriately. So in the equation for mass, we had rho v dot n dA integrated over area. And we can replace that with del dot rho v integrated over the volume. And that's convenient if we go back up to our mass balance, for example. That's convenient because it lets rho v dot n dA, it lets this be rewritten as del dot rho v integrated over the volume. And now we have two volume integrals. So if we move d dt inside because the volume isn't a function of time and then turn this into a volume integral del dot rho v using the Gauss divergence theorem then we can combine the two volume integrals and we get the integral over volume of d rho 
uh, with res uh, plus d rho dt plus del dot rho v, and that whole quantity times dv equals zero. Um, then you can show that, and we do the same thing with energy, for example. All of these areas turn into volume integrals, del dot quantity, and uh, then we can combine all those volume integrals. And then um, we have finally that um, um, those integrals, so they look like the integral over volume of all these terms dv equals zero. And since the volume that we're integrating over has to be arbitrary, doesn't matter what volume we integrate over, then that equation uh, uh, can only be true, meaning true for arbitrary volume if the integrand, all those terms themselves are zero. So this gives the final result. And we're also going to use del dot rho delta, this um, pressure times delta, this tensor quantity, can be written as grad P. So when we apply that, we get the mass, momentum, and energy equations uh, in a form that is um, commonly described. So we're going to use the finite, we're going to use the integral form because it's convenient for application to finite volume approaches. If we started with the differential form, we'd simply integrate this whole thing over a volume, and then um, and then we could convert the volume integrals for like the integral of del dot tau. We could convert those back to surface integrals again using the Gauss divergence theorem. So by starting with the uh, finite the integral form, we av avoid an extra step, but they're effectively the same kind of thing. Um, the terms, just to summarize, the terms on the left-hand side here are accumulation in the control volume and out minus in due to transport. And then on the right-hand side, these are going to be uh, due to our uh, conservation laws. Okay, and that is, that's it for the governing equations.